Okay, so I, I want to, to make a, a little example with, with objects and also introduce some new features in, in, um, in JavaScript 6, the new, the new version in JavaScript. Okay. So here we create uh, some files here. For example, uh, a car. No. Well, this this will be my program. Or program JS. And uh, just to load it, I will create a, an index. and load the script from here. Okay, this is, this is not a, a, a correct HTML, but it will work. <laughs> it will load the, the, pro, the program JS, and we'll print start. Again, samples index. Okay, so do you see it? Start. Actually, I will mostly work from here, from the console. So today, the console is more important than the, than the website. And uh, yeah, well, you can put here like mm, OOP in JavaScript. Oh, sorry. Du, 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 du. Okay, so mm, I, I want to to review what what's a class and an object. So this will be. Uh, much, much simpler and easier than what you saw before, that he was like crea creating objects and passing obje objects all the way, and classes that you don't know where they come from, but they are there. <laughs> so uh, what's, what's a class and what's an object? What's uh, object-oriented programming? Uh, a class is a specification, an idea of something, of some some concept. For example, car is, is a good name for a class, and it would be the idea of a car, okay? So a class specifies, in, in a class you specify the properties of the objects, of the cars, the, the properties that, the, that these objects have, and the actions that they can do. For example, this could be uh, a visual representation of a class. This is, this is used in some diagrams called UML. Maybe you have seen them somewhere. And they have three, three sections. The first section is the, the name of the class. These are the properties, and these are the, the actions. Okay. The properties are things or features that the car has, or the state of the car. For example, the brand is always the same for a car, but the speed, if it's the, the current speed, it may change over time. So this is the features or the, or, or the state of, of, the, of an object. And these are the, the actions that a car can do. It can accelerate, brake, or stop, simple thing. And the object, an object is, is the real thing, it's a specific instance of of the idea of the class. Uh, sorry, it was this was movie, so because I, I made <laughs> first first I made <laughs> first I made <laughs> the, the the movie class, and now it was car. So, for example, Ford uh, a Ford is a 
it's a specific yeah. specific car. No, not just the brand four, but just one specific Ford with some uh, matricula, no? one Ford, Ford one, the, the first Ford that was made, no? for example. Uh, an object has some specific values for the properties that the class specifies and can actually perform the actions. So for, for example, we can have a, uh, a Ford car that is running at 50 kilometers per hour, a Ferrari that is running faster, or a Toyota that it, that's stopped and it's, it's not running. And they, they have different states and they can, they could accelerate and the speed could uh, increase over time. They can, they can break and reduce the speed, like whoop, now it's 20, now it's 10, or they can stop and, and s like set the, their speed to, to zero. Okay, so how do you, how do you declare a, a class in, a, in, in JavaScript? In JavaScript, they, in JavaScript 6, or in the, the latest versions of JavaScript, they introduced this, uh, this keyword class. Because before you could create some sort of classes using functions, but it was a, di a bit dirty. And now they actually added the, the class keyword like in other languages. So now I, now I can create the class car and I can define properties. In some languages, you define properties like here, you have, uh, in most languages, you can have the property section, the constructor section that we will talk about, and the, the methods section, which are, which are the actions. These are like the, the state of the, of the object. But in, in JavaScript, you don't, you don't define the, the properties because it's, it's quite flexible. You, you can set any properties you want. You, you don't have to define them. Like for example, in Java, in Java or other uh, languages, you need to define them. So actually, you go directly. So I would say, in JS, you don't define them. I go directly to the constructor. So the constructor is a special, it's a special method where you can send initial values that you can uh, set to the to the objects like for example model and store this uh, store this this data into the object to store them you say this <coughs> and you decide a name for that property and I, and I decide it's model so I assign the model that I get from the constructor and I also decide that the speed will be zero by default Okay, because when I create a car, it will be stopped in the beginning. I could also s uh, send the speed here, but I won't do that. It's because I decided that. So if I have this class car, I can create an object saying uh, I need a variable, like for example, car one, and I create an object with new car and uh, I pass here the, the arguments to, to the constructor. I say that I'm passing the model, so I say for here. So this way I will have a, an object like this one. Oops. Um, I will have an, ob an object like this one uh, in the beginning, it will be zero, the speed. Okay, I'm creating this this object of the of the idea of class car. I can create other objects like uh, Ferrari or Toyota. So I have. I will name them them Ford. Ferrari and and Toyota. So I so we rem remember 
that this variable is holding the, the Toyota car. So now, now I have like three objects, three car objects, and they, they all have speed zero because they are stopped. Now, okay. Now I can um, change the the speed property. I can, uh, for example, accelerate or break the 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 speed of of each object. In JavaScript, I could access the properties of the of the object, like Ford dot model because I set them here, or dot speed. So I could set directly the speed to uh, 100 here. So in, at that moment, I would have, this was the fourth, I would have 100 here. Okay, I, I will, I will have four with the speed 100 and the other with zero because I didn't change it. But the problem with this is that I can set anything like 1,000 or minus 500, and it wouldn't make wouldn't make any sense to have here like minus uh, 500 uh, kilometers per hour. So usually you don't set the values directly. Through, through the properties, but you define some methods that, are, that modify the properties. For example, I want this, uh, these methods, like accelerate, brake, or stop. I can define them here. I can say I want accelerate. I want a method called accelerate. And I want to say the, the increment or the, the amount I want to increment the the accelerate the speed. And I can say this speed at the amount that I say. Okay, so now I can say for now any I have added this this me, this method so any object can do that. Can do that action like dot accelerate. and add, for example, 100. It, it will be more or less the same. But I can, here I can check things like maybe I don't want the speed to increase too much and, and limit that. I can do that, for example, with the brake thing. Let's say I add another method called brake, and I brake 200. So this is, it will be more or less the same. So in this case, I'm reducing the, the speed. But when I reduce the speed, if, if the speed is below zero, it doesn't make sense. So I set it to zero again. So it has a, a reasonable value. Because if I don't do that, If here I print the Ford speed, I will get. Oh, Ford. Thank you. The it's not here. So I will I will get like minus one hundred, which doesn't make sense for me. So I add a check here that if this speed reaches below zero, I set it again to zero. So now the Ford doesn't run minus 100. One, one cool method is uh, the two string method. This is an interesting method to, to add. It's a special method that is implicitly called every time uh, the object 
has to be uh, converted into a string. So for example, here I could return uh, this dot brand at this dot speed kilometers per hour. So this message will, will be uh, printed when I lock this. But I can say to string here. So the log prints all that information. It's, it's model. Ah, thank you. Model for that zero or for if I, if I don't reduce the speed for at 100. But I can also, uh, it, it will be automatically um, call if I, for example, concatenate it to a string like car, car for that 100. It's called automatically, although I'm not calling, calling the, the string method here. If I don't concatenate one string, the console log does, does a string thing, and it's like printing the, the object in this way. This, this is done by the console log, but sometimes I don't want this. So I can concatenate a string or even a, an empty string. Maybe with an empty string, I just get the 4 at 100. Okay, the, the cool thing with objects is when you, um, when you use objects that, when, when some objects use another objects. So, well, I, I'm not going to stand today <laughs> because it's, it's, too, it's too much maybe. And I, I, I prepared another thing. Oh, th th this, this is called inheritance. And it's a cool thing about about classes, but I, I didn't prepare that. Um, I'm going just to, to use some objects from, to do that, some objects use another object. For example, let's say I have a, a mecha mechanic, maybe? Is, is this a correct word, mechanic? Yeah. 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 Let's say this, the mechanic is, is, is trying the car, so it, so, it, so it, it, it's checking if the car is, is working, okay? Let's say it's like a robot that takes a car and tries it. So the, me the mechanic uh, doesn't need any, anything, the constructor, maybe I can skip it. Or, or well, I, I, will, I will say it, it just needs the, the, the car here. Okay, the mechanic gets the car in the constructor and store it. <coughs> so I can, I can create a, I can create a, a mechanic. Let make mechanic. Okay, and give it a car like Ford. It will check the, the Ford car to see if it's working okay or not. And then the mechanic, let's say it has an, ac an action that is uh, check car, for example. It's checking the car. So I, I don't have that, that method, I will create it. This is uh, check car. It doesn't have any arguments for now. And what it will do is try, try the car, maybe it, ta it, it takes a car. Uh, this car accelerate, so it, it accelerates the car by 100 and checks that the car speed is 100. It's uh, uh, uh. car speed, okay. Or it, I can say um, if, let's say that that this that this method uh, returns true if the car works okay, no? or 
false otherwise. So for example, now if car speed is not um, 100, return false. Because the, the mechanic knows already that the car is not working correctly. Now if he breaks the car by 50, he has to check that the, that the car is at uh, 50. Or, or if, I, if I reduce it by 60, now it should be 40. Okay, if it's not 40, return for false. It's already broken, that car. And now if he breaks by 200, tries to, to stop the car, it should be, should be zero, no? Oh yeah, thank you. I'm I'm trying to break, yeah. So it accelerates 100, checks the speed, brakes, checks checks the speed, brakes again, too much, but the speed should be zero. And finally, if everything was right, returns true. So now it checks the car, this the mechanic can check the car, and you can get the result, you know, the car is okay and finally print something so you can see the result uh, the car uh, for model is okay and print that that will be a boolean like true or false So let, let's say what the mechanic says. So the car four is okay, true. It says that, that the car is, is okay, it's working fine. But what happens if I break the car? If this is, I don't do this, okay. I'm not resetting the speed to zero when it's breaking too fast, but it's breaking too, too much. So now if I reload this, it will say that the car it's not okay. It's not. It's not working. Okay. I could call it test car instead of check car. Need power. Sorry. It looks like you're running oh, out of yeah. power. Oh yeah. Right. No, it it it, it, it it will not work. It's it's the old one. Ah. I will. It's, it's here. I thought it was full, but. So uh, I have renamed I have renamed the the check car to to test car. Uh, okay, the method I, I have renamed it from check car to test car. Do, do you know why? Do you know why I have named it test car? The the Mm, not exactly. It's because, uh, have, have you heard about testing, about uh, testing a program? Unit testing or integration testing. So this is, this is like a test. This is actually uh, some kind of test that you could write for your classes. Usually when you write a lot of classes, you need to write also tests for those classes to check that they're working correctly. And this is like a, well, a funny way, this is the mechanic, a funny way to, to write a test. <coughs> but when you write real tests for your programs, you will do something similar to this, very similar. And, uh, okay, so, so this, this is like, like a unit test. It's called unit test when you are testing just one one class. 
if you're testing many classes at the same time, it's called integration test. But the idea is more or less the same, is to, to check your code. And this is one idea. And the other idea here is that there's one class using another one. So there's one object, in this case, this mechanic object that I created here, that is using the fourth object to, it, it's manipulating it, doing something with it, okay? So using this idea of objects using other objects, I thought of this, um, this framework, because I, I was, a few days ago I was, I was reading that there are like tons of JavaScript frameworks and that every day a new one <laughs> appears. <laughs> Maybe it's a joke, but almost every day a new Java framework, a new JavaScript framework appears. So I thought of creating a new framework, and in this case, it's a fake framework. So I named it fake work. It's my, my new framework, <laughs> my contribution to the JavaScript uh, well, and it's a, it's a fake framework just to learn object orientation and to understand how most frameworks, or in this case, full stack frameworks, are organized. Uh, I, I made this simple, this simple diagram about how usually an application is, is a structure. It usually has four layers. This is, not all applications are structured like this, but this is really typical for many applications. Has four layers, and these layers are like groups of objects that they work together. They are communicating together. Usually the objects from here communicate from, with objects from here, like the database is not communicating directly with the web components, but it's like layered. The message, the calls are passed through this chain. And these are the four layers. This is the web or front end layer. And the other ones are called the, the back end, the back end layers. Okay, all, all together. Maybe I should like I should group them so this all together is, is the is the back end. Okay. <coughs> And uh, this is the, the components that are uh, responsible of writing the, the, EH, the HTML and JavaScript and CSS part. Like, for example, Vue or Angular or React or all these components or frameworks. And this part, this uh, API, is, uh, sorry. The API part is responsible for receiving calls from the front end and passing them to the lower layers. Okay, it's, it's, it's more more like a like a gateway, getting requests from the web and passing to the service. Then the service is like the most important part. All the parts are important, but maybe this is the most important because it has the logic of your application. It knows what to do in your application. Uh, depends on the application that you have. Maybe you, are, you have a, a cars application, so it knows about the cars. It does all the stuff with the cars, the re repairing or adjusting the cars and all the logic that you need for your, for your um, business. Sometimes it's called business layer also the business layer or the service layer or the logic, the business logic, okay? Uh, this is where the, your algorithms, algorithms are, all the computing. And then this layer is, is the database, it's just uh, for storing data, okay? So usually when you, when you are browsing, when you are using an application, uh, 
for example, these, the Google Slides is, is an application, a really, really advanced application. And when I do things here and when I create objects and all that, every time I do something here, like maybe writing something here, every time I write here, it sends, maybe not all the time, but after a couple of seconds, it sends a, a, a request to the APIs saying, hey, he changed something. Then this API uh, transfers the information to the service, and the service knows what to do. Maybe he has to update some data inside and do some calculations, and then stores your document on the database. So that's why if I close this, this window and I opened it at home, it will stay the same. Because the next time I will open this application and it will make a request for the API service and we'll get the data from the database and it's stored there. Okay, it's saved on database. Okay, so I'm, I made this fake, I will, you will, I will show you no, 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 not in a lot of detail, but I made this um, this fake framework. Um, okay, so uh, so you can you can see that, or it's too small. Maybe. I can. I don't know if I can. Anybody knows how to make this bigger? Or no? Or With? It's, it's, it's getting bigger, but only this part. Yeah, it's, for, it's, it's by the stars. Maybe if I... Mm, mm, mm. Zooming this way. Yeah. In that place. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah, better? Mm -hmm. So here you have the well, these are the samples that you saw before. You have the, the front end and the back end, okay? Inside my framework. The, the back end half has the API, the data, and the service layers that you saw before. And also has another folder for the, the classes, the data that I will handle in my application. This will be an application of movies and directors. So I have this class movie. You can see a simple class director that has the name and the country of the director and an ID. And it, it, this is used for the database. I will uh, say it later. And you can see that there are no, no, no methods here, just the constructor. This is because this is a, a dumb uh, class, a simple class, just to store the data. It doesn't have any, any actions. So the other layers are the, the API, the data, and the service, okay? And in the front end, I have uh, a controller that is more or less like, like view, but, or Angular, but in a very simple way. So I will show you first the data, the data part of my application. Okay, this is this is simulating a database. So you will actually in a real application you will have a real database. But here I just create an array of movies and directors. Okay, I'm creating new movie, new movie, new movie, and creating four, <coughs> obje four objects with different data. This is, if you remember the, uh, the class, this, this was the ID of the movie. This is the ID of the director, and it points to here. 
Okay, so, so Pulp Fiction is made by Tarantino. This is the name of the movie, the uh, genre of the movie, and this is, uh, is classic or not, if, if the movie is, is a classic or is not. Just these two movies are classics and the two uh, are not classics. Um, I, will, I will use that later. What, what? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. thank you. <clears throat> okay, so this is just um, static uh, movies. I, I won't add more movies, just so we can try that. And uh, here I have a method that uh, can search for things inside my, date, my fake database, okay? Usually you will use some uh, database, database language like SQL or maybe some kind of driver with functions for your Mongo database or also your uh, SQL database. Sometimes you have some, some classes, some libraries that help you uh, find things, but this will be really, really simple. It takes a query object that has three, 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 three properties. One is the table that you want to query, maybe movies or directors. Uh, the second one is the property that you want to look for. Maybe you want to look for the genre of the movie. And then the value. I did something. Okay, so this just selects the, the maybe maybe selects the movies and then maybe filters the movies from the property genre that are comedies. Okay, really simple. So I go to the service. The service is the part that talks with the database. Okay, so it it may look it may tell the database. Mm, tell me the movies that are comedies. Okay, so the service is this way. Okay, the service is creating uh, an instance of the database. Okay, it, it needs an instance of the database so it can talk to the database. Okay, so in the methods of the movie service, it will uh, use this object like the mechanic using the car. In this case, I'm using this object is using the database to query things to the database. So for example, the service has methods like find movies by genre, and it gets the genre that it wants to look for. It builds a query that the database needs. The table is movies, the property is genre, and the value is the genre that I get from the argument. So it tells the database, hey database, find me this query that I give you, and you know what to do with this query. Okay? If you are using SQL, maybe this would be like select, select everything from movies where genre equals genre. And well, he, here I'm referring to this one, okay? And this is the, the name of the, of the property. So this, this is, I'm faking like this kind of query. And it, the database gives me that, the movies, okay? I can also find classic movies. So the query is more or less the same, but instead of genre, I say is classic, it's, it's true. Okay, so it looks for this property and is true and the rest is the same. And this is a, a slightly more complicated logic. And this is, I made this because these two methods are a bit stupid or a bit simple, but the service can be more intelligent. But this is also very simple, but uh, this is a bit more complex because this, this finds suggested movies by genre. Returns an array of suggested, suggested movies if you like that genre, okay, you, you tell them, you tell the genre that you like, and it returns some movies that you may like. 
And what it does is it finds movies for that genre because he knows you like that genre, but it also finds uh, classic movies that you may like. Okay, so it joins, it concatenates. It, this concat is like putting together all the movies by genre and all the movies that are classics together and gives you that. Uh, maybe it, it may get repeated because some classic movies may be also the ones by the genre. So I made this, and it is, this is um, all this. This is uh, removing uh, repeated values using a, a set. Okay, this is a, we, we, you, you can ask me later if you want what it, what it does. Okay, it's, it's, it's filtering the, the repeated ones using a set. So finally, half movies that are the genre that I want, or that are classic and without repetitions. Or it does the final movies, it just queries the table movies and without any query. Or it finds all the directors. It's the same, but it queries the director's table. Okay, different methods that my movie service have. Now comes the um, the API part. The API part, let's see. The API part will, will use the service, okay? Each layer knows the, the one after that. This layer knows this one. So it, it, the same way that the service knows the database, the API will have an object of uh, movie service. So if I go to the API, It has an object of movie service. And see, okay. This is mimicking or this is simulating. I didn't see that. Okay, this method uh, simulates that it gets a real HTTP request. Okay, a request. I have, uh, I have defined here below, I have defined two classes, uh, HTTP request and HTTP response. An HTTP request is it's a, a request that goes through the, through the internet, so you cannot call this method <coughs> directly. You cannot, the, the web part cannot call a method on the API. It has to send through the wire, through the internet, has to send a request. And the, the internet requests are usually, are usually the HTTP request, which have three, three parts, usually. They have uh, something called HTTP method that may be get, post, put, or delete. It's just like a word, uh, get, post, put, or delete. Then it has a path that is, is a string, like, for example, uh, slash movies, because you want movies. And it may have other data that you need for the request. For example, if the request is, is a search request, the data may be the, the, the query of the request, the, the, gen, the genre that you're looking for. Uh, and, and if you're creating something, maybe you're sending the data to, to store. Uh, if you're creating a new movie, you send the title, the director, and all that. So here, I'm simulating that I'm getting a request from the internet. And I want to build a response, the, the result of this, of, this, uh, of this call, no? And it says, okay, if I get, uh, the, if the HTTP method is get, from the methods here that are get, post, put, and delete, get is usually used for uh, getting data. And post is usually used for putting data, to store data. Okay, so in my examples, or are, are querying data. So I will use only get. If the method is get, and the request path is slash movies, it means that I'm looking for movies. Maybe the request also comes with data uh, genre, okay, with the data genre, and I store it here. 
uh, if the if the genre is is specified, I call the fine movies by genre. If the genre is not specified, I call the final movies, every movie, without filtering. Finally, uh, the movies I have the movies here, maybe filter or not, and now this request um, method returns a response. So it it's simulating I'm responding through the through the wire through the internet, and I'm creating a new HTTP response. And an HTTP response have uh, has two two parts. One is the 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 status the HTTP status code, and it it's used for telling if the request va was successful or not. And then comes the data. Okay, I'm going back here down here. An HTTP response has a status that is a code indicating if the request was okay or failed for some reason. Uh, maybe you have seen some of these codes somewhere. Uh, 200 means okay, 401 means un unauthorized, that you don't have access to that. 404 means that the request was, the object was not found, maybe the movie was not found or something like that. This is a wrong request. Maybe you didn't specif specify the, the right arguments for the request. And 500 usually means that there was some crash on the server, some unexpected crash on your server. Usually means a bug on, on your server. So here, if, uh, if I got the movies correctly, no problem. I say 200, OK. And here I am, I am converting the movies into a string, okay. So this is like simulating that I'm that I'm sending the data through the wire through the internet as a stream of characters, not not as an object, because I don't I cannot send the object directly. I do the same if the HTTP method is get and the path is movies requested. This is. This is the difference, okay? If, if I just say slash movies, it's searching movies by genre, maybe. And if I say movies suggested, I'm looking for suggested movies. And it will call the other method, the suggested movies by genre. That gets me some suggestions. And it does the same, return 200, and, and it's uh, converting the movies into a string. Then I have another method get and the path directors and it returns the directors. Okay, if else, see, it's, uh, if the request doesn't match any of the known requests, maybe I tell him for uh, 12 what that means, uh, the request is bad, it's, it's wrong, okay? I don't send any, this is the data, the, the result, but I don't have data to, re to return, so I return null and for one, two. And finally, uh, in any case, I return the response. So the, 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 web, the web request is calling the API and the API returns, always returns something. Maybe a 200, okay, or maybe a 400 meaning something went wrong. Okay, so now I'll move to the, to the web part. Okay, and th this is the front end part. The front end has a controller. Usually, um, usually views are divided into, into parts. One is the one is the, the template. The template is the, the HTML, where you will write things. And the other part is a controller. This is related to the uh, MVC, the Model View Controller, where the view is the template, is the HTML template, like this one. And the controller is an object that controls the view. Uh, the controller is responsible for calling, in this case, calling the API or the service to get data and to put it on the, on the view, okay, somehow. And the template 
it's just the HTML template with some maybe some logic inside to display things. So the controller here, which is in the in the front end side, uh, it's uh, it has an, an instance of the mo of the movie API to call it. Okay, this is this is a simulation because actually you don't have an API object from the front end. You make HTTP requests to the to the front end because the API is in the remote server. You don't have an object of the API. Okay, is it? Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. you, you are now on the front end. You don't have. You cannot say API dot request, but this is a simulation. On the other side, the other things that I did, they are like quite real. They are just making stupid things maybe, but the, the calls are, <coughs> are not so different from the real thing. In this case, no. The movie controller will call the movie, the movie API so in this case, what I'm doing is, this is the, because this is the web page. Okay, I have a, an input where I can say, for example, I want to look for movies that are uh, thriller. And if I click search, I say it here in the, uh, sorry. If I, if I click the button search, this is the first one, it will call the search by genre in the controller. Okay, so here I have the method search by genre will be called. And this, what this will do is uh, it will get the, the input value, okay, the, the value that I input, the, the thriller uh, input. And it will simulate an HTTP request, like get slash movies and the data with genre thriller, okay? So this is, this is like, the, this, this is doing the, this fake Ajax call, this HTTP call. And it's using the movie API. It's passing the get method and the slash movie and data. So this way, it will match this request, okay? I'm sending get slash movies here in the controller. Get slash movies and the data with the genre to search that I got from the input. This fake Ajax call is just doing this. Okay, I, I'm creating an HTTP request, it's, which is a fake request with a method, in this case get, the path, in this case slash movies, and the data, the genre. It will call the API request with, the, with this request, which will call this method request. It will get the movies with the, with the genre, and then will return the response, okay? And this response that is returning here, I will get it here. This is the response. And it will check, okay, the response is 200, okay, so it's okay. Um, if you remember, the data that it returns, it's, it's passed to, to a string of characters, to a, to a string, to a text. No? In this case, to, to simulate that is sent through the internet. So here I am parsing, which is the, the opposite action it will get this data as a string and it will convert it to an object again. So here I will have the objects and it will return them. Otherwise, if the status is not 200, I just throw an error here just to, to check that this is working okay. Um, index controller, okay. So here I will have my movies. If the fake Ajax call is, is working, 
it just makes a request, gets a response, blah, 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 and then gets the movies, and I have the movies here. Okay. This, is, this is like an indirect way of, of accessing my, my backend. I'm getting the movies from the backend through an HTTP request. And then I display them. I have here a method. Uh, the movies are an array of objects. They are objects. It's it's an array of objects, and each object has name, uh, director. So here here I'm displaying the movies. Okay, um, this is an array. It says this is a bit dirty. It's much cleaner using a web framework like Angular or Vue. Okay, usually you will use a a good. Uh, a good frame web framework, but I'm doing this manually just to show you. I'm using this, I'm, I'm looping the movies, movies is an array, and I'm using this loop, this loop is a new loop in, in the new version of JavaScript that is just uh, searching for, it. It, it's, it's like for each movie in movies, do this, okay, because the in doesn't work as, as expected, it's not searching through the movies in mo to them each movie in movies but it's getting the the end indexes of the of the array so the office is nicer they are they are creating new new things in in the new javascript 6 because they realized that they, there were many things broken for example the the bar the bar uh, keyword does really nasty things so now you should use let or even const if you want uh, if you want alter the, the variable again if you're just setting some value you just use const so here I'm starting with an empty string and creating paragraphs with each movie with the title of each movie and finally, I'm putting the result on, on the diff that is here, this result, okay. So if I am searching thriller, okay, I see, I see here the movies that are thrillers, okay. If I say suggest me, it will tell me thrillers, but also Movies that are classics, because maybe I like Space Odyssey, because it's a classic. Okay, in the, in that case, this is the other button, the suggest by genre, and the movie controller, in suggest by genre is doing more or less the same. It's getting the value from the input, and calling the AJAX call. The only difference is the path here okay so this this call and this call is more or less the same get the, the method is get the data is the same but the path is different and because the path is different the api will do a different thing with movies we'll do this and we suggested we'll do suggested by movies suggested by genre that you saw that like, in the end it's calling the service, accessing the database. Okay, so, well that was, <laughs> that was my example. Uh, do you have any, any question, any, did you understand everything I said? <laughs> it's my, my fake framework, you can use it anywhere to, to make, <laughs> to make uh, stupid applications. <laughs> But in, in the end, it's, it's useful because it's, it's the, the structure of an application. It's really, it's really like that. It's only that they are really fake or simple. But I'm sure you, you have worked or, or you will work with applications that are this way. <laughs>